Center at Arizona State University. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups for today's game. For the Bruins of UCLA, at forward, a six foot seven inch senior from Los Angeles, California, number 35, James Wilkes. For the Blue Demons of DePaul, at forward, a six foot nine inch senior from Albuquerque, New Mexico, number 11, Jim Mitchell. At forward for UCLA, a six foot eight inch senior from Los Angeles, California, number 55, Tiki Vandaway. At forward for DePaul, a six foot seven inch sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 24, Mark Aguirre. At center for UCLA, a six foot six inch sophomore from Los Angeles, California, number 11, Mike Sanders. At center for DePaul, a six foot nine inch freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 32, Terry Cummings. At guard for UCLA, a six foot one inch freshman from New Britain, Connecticut, number 10, Rod Foster. At guard for DePaul, a six foot two inch sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 44, Skip Dillard. At guard for UCLA, a six foot three inch freshman from Pasadena, California, number 14, Michael Holton. At guard for DePaul, a six foot junior from East Orange, New Jersey, number 23, Clyde Bradshaw. The head coach of the UCLA Bruins, Larry Brown. And the head coach for the Blue Demons of DePaul, Ray Meyer. Brown, 39 years of age, his first year as the head coach of UCLA against the 66-year-old patriarch of the DePaul Blue Demons, Ray Meyer. And we'll have the... We're going to have the opening tip-off in just a moment. We understand that we have other network affiliates joining this telecast from the far west as other games are be being completed in the east. You see the DePaul huddle, Ray Meyer, final instructions, his assistant coach and son, Joe Meyer, with the back to us to his right. And we'll have the opening tip-off here at Arizona State University right after we pause for this word. These days, Americans want good mileage and good value, and Ford, and Ford doing something about it. During Ford's fuel economy celebration, make your best deal on a new 1980 Thunderbird, and Ford will send you a check for $500. Buy a high mileage new Fairmont and get $300. Just take delivery by March 22nd. Ford's really putting its money where the mileage is. How old? There's money where the mileage is. Up to $500. And there's mileage news at Ford. In goal, in his first professional game, our own Olympic claim, Jim Gray. The Coke and the smile makes me feel good. That's the way it should be. I like to say it. Oh, wow. Smile it with me. Coca-Cola has right. Have a Coke and a... Take it from two guys who've had a lot to smile about lately. Smile. First half, UCLA in the blue with yellow trim, DePaul in white with red and blue. The officials are Dr. Hank Nichols, the referee, Albert Fielden, and Dan Woolridge are the umpires. And DePaul controls the opening tap. Skip Dillard, and here's Clyde the Glide Bradshaw. Cummings, a sensational freshman, off to the senior Mitchum, playing with a broken hand. Aguire fires, and it's not there. James Wilkes, the top defensive forward for UCLA. He'll be hawking. Aguire got the rebound. Surprised Aguire took a shot from the outside. I thought he could win side try to get fouled right off the bat. Freshman guards for UCLA, Foster and Holton. Wilkes, a senior with the ball down. Sanders a sophomore in the post and Vandaway the other forward also a senior that's Sanders short Holton underneath to convert for UCLA well, the underdog Bruins take the early lead Dillard Bradshaw Holton on him Big matchup is Wilkes against Aguirre. Two great physical athletes. Mitchum is short. Rebound to Aguirre. I'm surprised the ball is thought not shoot from the outside. They've got to get the game inside. That's where they're strong. Cummings inside off a of foot of a UCLA player to DePaul. 
Coach, you had an interesting comment about the fans around the country as this tournament develops. There are natural, uh, inborn DePaul fans, but there are them getting their own Subway alumni. What happens is each team loses. I think they pick up Ray Meyer and DePaul, and all of a sudden it's like a, a tidal wave coming in. McGuire, Diller, Bradshaw, the left-hander, way off the mark. DePaul's first three attempts have not been close. Uh, UCLA was in the zone then, Dick, 2-3. Foster to Vandaway. Rod Foster, the rocket from Connecticut. Not there, but Vandaway follows it in. It's 4 to nothing, UCLA. DePaul seems to be a little mixed up on their assignments defensively. Some were playing the zone then, others were playing man-to-man. -man. Get the ball into Mark and off to the races. Cummings, a 16-footer. Not there, and it's a rebound by Sanders. 6'6", six, six, sophomore from DeRitter, Louisiana. Holton, a nice move. He had the 15-footer, passed it up. It's Wilkes from the side. Not there. Dillard rebounds for DePaul. Junior college transfer from Casper, Wyoming this year, and he's really settled that backcourt along with Bradshaw. McGuire, flip pass, and almost too casual. Out of bounds. Oh, I'd, I'd like to see you if one of your <laughs> players had made that pass. And look at Ray Meyer well, reacting just the same. Yeah, a little bit too much French pastry that time, Mark. UCLA with a 4-0 lead. We played two minutes and 20 seconds of this first half. Coach Larry Brown has brought UCLA along famously since the beginning of the year. About 14 games ago, he put Sanders, a short man, in the post. Vandaway outside, way short. Out it comes to Mitchum. DePaul on the break. Bradshaw with Cummings. Oh, what a pass. And Cummings has DePaul's first basket. Glide to glide through a professional pass that time. Outstanding. Foster. Lightning quick to Wilkes. Bolton to Vandaway. Bolton does not shoot much. Out of bounds off the foot of Holton to DePaul. Surprised he didn't go after the ball. Watch Bradshaw cut in this time and, and kick the ball into uh, Cummings if we get a replay here. Yeah, let's stay with the live action at this point. We have a foul away from the ball. And I believe it's on Wilkes trying to hold Aguirre. It is Wilkes, the first foul of the game. Let's check other scores. Key action on this Sunday around the nation. Final, Georgetown in quite a battle in the East. Eliminates Iona, 74-71. LSU advances, a 10-point victory over Alcorn. And it's Virginia Tech over Indiana. We had heard the score the other way. Aguirre has tied it up for DePaul at four apiece. Let's double check that score. We had heard Indiana was leading. That score indicates Virginia Tech with a mighty big upset. We'll get confirmation for you. Mark Aguirre got the ball inside. That was all she wrote, two points. Vandaway inside, and he, he scores as well, and there's a foul. Super move by Kiki Vandaway that time. Slipped in between the two defensive men. Cummings got the foul. Kiki does it nice and slow and nice and easy. Slips in between them, keeps his head up, lays the ball over. He's hit, could be a possible three-point play. Son of Ernie Vandaway. We do understand it was Indiana one and not Virginia Tech, so just reverse those scores. That's why I kept quiet, Dick. I wasn't sure. But and I, I wanted to be sure. We <laughs> just read what we saw on the monitor, and that was our first report. The Paul's going to win there to keep the ball in this fella's hands. He's the key to the Paul, not Mark McGuire. Bradshaw's the key. Here's Foster the other way as the Bruins on the run, and it's Foster who can't connect. Sanders rides the boards and scores, but there's a foul on Sanders of UCLA. Yeah, it looks first. Like, looked like he had a saddle that time. He came on someone's back. I think he thought he was on the back of his own teammate, however, and that's what Larry Brown is yelling. Boy, did you see that rockets go that time? <laughs> we have a timeout. The score is 7-4, to four, UCLA. We return to our studios. We welcome fans in Denton, Texas. We got the commercial cue. There obviously was no commercial. All right, we're set to go here at Arizona State in the early going. Four minutes have been played. UCLA leading favor to Paul. That's Mark Aguirre. And it'll be out of bounds to UCLA. Excellent call. Skip Dillard was sliding on the out of bounds line. He touched the ball, so automatically UCLA's ball. Larry Brown, the young coach of the Bruins, his team in front by three. Arizona State, Ohio State waiting in the wings for the second game. Back 
Door play should be two. Bolton can't hit it. Rebound nicely by Aguirre. They set that play up perfectly. Two, three high offense. Grubbs in the game. Teddy Grubbs for the first time, and he hits. Grubbs was the star in the victory over UCLA early in the season when he scored 28 coming off the bench. Many of the shots, much like that one. Exactly like that one, Dick. That was a 99-94 victory for DePaul at Foley Pavilion. Foster. Rebound and taken away for a moment by Wilkes. But it's coming, so he's been an outstanding board man, the freshman. DePaul looking for its first lead. It's Bradshaw. Not there. The tip by Vandeweghe outside. Foster can't save it. DePaul's ball. Cummings kept alive, and Kiki Vandeweghe got his hand on it and kicked it out of bounds. Even the 66-year-old Baron of Belden Avenue feeling the pressure. You saw him, that big exhale. Doesn't want to coach any place else. He doesn't want to live any place else but Chicago. He is Chicago this week. Aguirre can't connect. Cummings follows it, and he is fouled in turn by Mike Sanders, his second foul. The thing about Cummings that makes him so good, he's off his feet so quick for tall men. Cummings, 6'9", freshman from Conver High School in Chicago. He'll be at the line. Second foul on Sanders, and third team foul on UCLA. He's a born-again Christian, and he made a turnaround in his life. Where other fellows are taking uh, books and uh, records, he brings Bible and, uh, and Bible re uh, records to the, on the trips with him. He has tied the game at seven. He didn't play uh, basketball, organized basketball, until he was a sophomore in high school. Eight to seven to Paul's first lead. Cummings has four. out here at Arizona State. Five minutes have been played, and DePaul leads UCLA 8-7. to seven. We return to our studios for this message. Weekends were made for Michelob. Weekends were made for special friends. It's the time to have that smooth and mellow beer. It's Michelob. Every weekend is really a little vacation at the end of the week. And doesn't that call for Michelob? Weekends were made for Michelob. Yeah. Here's the estimate. A lot of money for a small home. Mm, rebuilding costs are going uh, through the roof. The roof. <laughs> Glad it wasn't the whole house. What if it were? Could your insurance rebuild it today? I never thought of it. Allstate has. We have homeowners insurance that can increase your coverage as rebuilding costs go up automatically. You're smart to keep up with rising rebuilding costs. Yeah, glad I thought of it. You're in good hands with Allstate. And that's a promise from us, the good hands people. A reminder, you'll also see the breathtaking thrills World Cup aerial skin. It's a human ballet on skis in midair. If you've never seen this before, it is sensational entertainment. That's later today on NBC Sports World. There's human ballet right there, Dick. That's college basketball right there. That's Next right. year, we got to pick a cheerleader squad for the season, an all-American cheerleader squad. I think that's a great idea, and it has a lot of possibilities, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we will uh, and have picked our NBC all-freshman team in this year, sensational first-year players in the college ranks. And we're pleased to announce we're going to present them to the press on the Sunday between the semifinals and finals, two weeks from today in Indianapolis at Market Square Arena. And it is a mighty, mighty difficult decision to name the best because it has been a bumper crop. And you're seeing two of them here today. Terry Cummings of DePaul, Rod Foster of UCLA. And in the second game, Scott of Arizona State and Kellogg of Ohio State. They're all under consideration. Eight to seven, DePaul leads UCLA. Five minutes into the game, DePaul pressuring UCLA in the backcourt. It's a 4-1 zone press up front with Cummins playing a one-man zone in the back, protecting the basket. All right, Holden is free, and we'll set up the offense. They go into man-to-man out there. No, they're staying in the zone. Excuse me, a 2-3 zone. A lot of teams have zoned UCLA this year. Larry Brown was hoping that he could take it, thinking of early lead to force the ball into man-to-man. -man. He feels his team would play better. Bolton to Foster, not a bad outside shooter. 
Not there, and it's a Guire. Great position. Here come the Demons. Bradshaw, the quarterback. Junior from East Orange, New Jersey, sets up Dillard. Skip Dillard can't hit. Holton with a rebound. Bradshaw might be the best point guard in basketball today. Holton, Sanders, 18-footer, and UCLA's back in front, 9-8. to eight. Two points for Sanders. Sanders, for his size, can shoot from the outside. Matter of fact, Larry said he's a zone breaker, so watch for him to shoot out there. Brooks is doing a good job on Aguirre. That's Grubb's spot. Can't hit that one, and it's Aguirre with a rebound, and he is fouled by Foster. Any rebound on the offensive board underneath there, it's automatic two or three point play or a two shot foul. Let's take a look at this. He gets the ball on the inside with the position there and it's automatic. They had to hit him, otherwise we'd have two points. Mark Aguirre, what a sensational year. The sophomores averaged 27 points a game. And almost eight rebounds a game. He was the top scoring freshman last year, 24 point average and 27 points a game as a sophomore. A new game at nine, coach. They're trying to turn him over. They're putting the pressure on up court. Foster two on one with Sanders. Good pass to Sanders. And a foul on Dillard. Dillard, number 44. Dillard made a good play to hustle him back after the breakthrough. UCLA is breaking their pressure. Then the defensive team of the uh, Paul has to hustle back. Dillard got back there real good that time, but caught the man's wrist. Here he is. See him hustling back? That's what makes a good defense. Now he catches him right there. DePaul's now sitting in the 2-3 zone again. And DePaul makes the steal as Aguirre jumped in front of Wilkes to steal it. 9-9 tie. He played nearly seven minutes. Bradshaw. Grubbs. There, Aguirre got his hands on it again. So did Bradshaw had moved inside, but it's UCLA the other way. Sanders, good reaction as Dillard had position on him. Foster <laughs> weaving inside, and he scores. Rob Foster gives UCLA 11 to 9 lead. Certainly quick in a one on one situation, you're not going to stop him. First bucket for Foster. Cummings with a left hand who scored. Beautiful left hand tip that time. Well, 35 and Cummings now with four points for DePaul. Bradman against Vandalay as he took a little shuffle step starting his dribble. And with the game tied at 11, it's DePaul the other way. And a technical oh. foul on Larry Brown. That was a that quick one. Long, did it? Wow. Trying to hit. There it is. He shuffled his feet going around after the head fake. And Larry Brown says, that's a cheap technical, he shouts at the official. Well, you know, it's happened the same way it happened yesterday on Norm Stewart. He got a, a technical very early in the game. It looks like the officials don't want the game out of hand. Dr. Hank Nichols is the referee, and he slapped that tee on Brown in a hurry. Now, I, I thought yesterday that maybe Digger Phelps made a mistake in not countering the technical foul by Norm Stewart. So you would have come right back and gotten one yourself? Well, not, you? not a tent. I would have uh, reacted because after a, a referee calls a technical foul, there seems to be a little bit of appeasement. They figure, well, I put his, the guy in his place, and uh, he kind of bends the other way subconsciously. Let's see what happens in this situation now. McGuire is one for three from the line. One for four. That's most unusual. And McGuire with a puzzled expression, painfully so, after he missed that second one. Usually that comes from not having concentration. It's much more difficult to shoot a technical foul because there's nobody on the foul line. You're used to all the time guys being lined up on both sides. McGuire posting Wilkes up. Can't hit, follows his shot. And it's out of bounds off the toe of Terry Cummings. Boy, those demons really crash the offensive boards. And of course they have big weapons in there and Cummings and Aguirre. They bang him. Well, the big problem at UCLA, they don't have a true center. Wilkes is doing a magnificent job out there with Kiki Vandeweghe and Sanders, but they can't match with um, DePaul's baseline. Teddy Grubbs, Cummings, and Mark Aguirre. DePaul is still sitting in the 2-3 zone. Excuse me. Please. That's all right. Eight minutes gone. 11 11 Rod Foster. Out there. Oh, what a tip by Mike Sanders as he came flying in from the wing. He's only 6'6". 
Four points for Sanders. That was really a tough dunk more than a tip. Dillard can't get inside Foster. Cummings working the baseline against Vandaway. Vandaway rebounds for UCLA. And the Bruins with a 13-11 lead head up court. Sanders to Vandaway. That should be two. It is. 15-11. You give his father that shot, Dr. Ernie, at his age today, he'll can it. Seven points for Vandaway. The Bruins leading score averaging just under 20 points a game. The ball, you got to get the ball into Bradshaw's hands. He'll there take care of the show. Let him run the red tempo. Dillard, a 20-footer, and the ball counters. It's 15-13. Bradshaw makes other people heroes. He'll shake and bake and pass off on the inside. See, yep. For some reason, teams seem to forget who their stars are. It's something you've always preached and uh, it makes so much sense. Foster nails a 15-footer and it's 17-13 and the pace quickens here in the midpoint of the first half. Kid from Connecticut is really turning on. Inside, Dillard blocked partially by Foster but recovered by the quick hands of Bradshaw. Slips inside oh. and scores. Beautiful left hand he put up there. He slipped around real quick. He's like a cat under there. In the land of the Giants. First points for Bradshaw. 17-15. UCLA with the lead and the ball. Vandaway inside and he was fouled by Bradshaw. In comes number 32 for UCLA. He did not play at all against Old Dominion. Daryl Allums. Once a starter for UCLA earlier in the year. But when Larry Brown made up his new lineup, a lineup that won nine of the last 12. Allums came out and Mike Sanders became the center. Here comes number 30, Darren Day, one of the talented freshmen on the UCLA club. He replaces Foster. I Day think, is 6'7". I think you'll see him alternate with Allums and Wilkes because Allums has the body to neutralize uh, Aguirre's body. See, what you've got to remember in basketball, the size of the body means height. Um, Aguirre, what's his height right now? Mark 6'7". Is he 6'7"? 6'7", right. but with that body, he goes 6'9". They might be cheap on that height. Van, I think they are. Vandway, way off the mark. Grubs off his shoulder, out to Bradshaw. DePaul looking for a tying basket. It's Dillard who guns. And knocks it home. It's tied at 17. He played high school ball at Mark Aguirre. He didn't have the academic mark, so he had to go to junior college. Stayed there one year, got a B average, eligible right away. There's two more years after this. Westinghouse High School. There's Bradshaw with one of his patented steals. Oh! He took you to school that time. He went between his legs. I didn't think he was that fancy. 